we should be protesting about Chicago, where this weekend so far, 16 people shot. What does it say? Six of them dead? I'll dig that out of my stack here. I'm going from memory. Here, let me pull it up. Six dead, 17 wounded. I'm sorry. I said 16 wounded, six dead. It's six dead, 17 wounded, Chicago Sun Times. Boom. And 94% of it, Justice Department's own numbers from 1976 to 2011, that's the latest numbers we have, is black on black crime. And I've got a stack of news here, ladies and gentlemen. We're all over the country. From Chicago to Miami to New York to L.A., white people are being attacked and having their heads beat in and being robbed and being shot in Florida and killed for a free Zimmerman sticker. Now, we're going to get to what Charles Barkley had to say about this coming up in the next segment, but I appreciate this man joining us to talk about this. Everyone knows that I'm here trying to bring everybody together. Everyone that listens to this show knows I stand up against tribalism and racism because it's a tool of social engineering and control. But just like Charles Barkley said, he said, a lot of black people are racist too. The difference is the media says it's okay. Just like when they used to say it was okay to beat up gay people. And folks would go out to gay bars and beat up people because, well, they deserve to have their teeth knocked out and robbed because they're gay. Well, now being white is wrong and we deserve to be beat up. And I am sick of it. I'm sick of being called a cracker. I'm sick of the I'm sick of MSNBC and all their white hosts engaging in the worst race baiting. The Klan were a bunch of race baiters, folks. That's all this is. And it's being played from the other end. Now, Pastor James David Manning has tens of millions of YouTube views. He has a big church. Uh, in Harlem, speaking out against dependency and big government and the thug culture of gangsterism that MTV pushes, and he feeds hundreds of children a day with the uh, uh, lunch program and, 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 and breakfast program there. And he is one of the only preachers prominently in that area standing up for people. And that's why I wanted to get him on, because this is what I want. I believe a rising tide raises all ships. And if we don't have freedom... For everybody, nobody has freedom. And the Romans use divide and conquer. I believe that's what this is. We've got about six minutes till we go to break. Then another segment with Pastor Manning. Pastor Manning, you've heard my rant on this, but I wish people were protesting for, our, for America and our republic to be restored, Pastor Manning. Well, I, I think you left out CNN. I think they're big on promoting this, this Trayvon Martin issue, oh, yes. the George Zimmerman verdict. Uh, they have been advocating for a uh, guilty verdict for Zimmerman. Um, really, what they want to do was to lynch him. I think they thought that perhaps they could get greater ratings if they did so, but certainly MSNBC and others. But, yeah, Alex, th there's a major problem in America, and we could talk about the protesting against what's happening with NSA and our government, but with black people, it's simply that black people don't have honor. And that's a major issue that no one wants to talk about. I mean, you could talk about, you know, all the race baiters and all the social programs and everything else that's been done to try to advance or lift the boats of black people in America. It hasn't worked, Alex. It has not worked. We're at a worse point now than we've been in the history of this nation, and it's because there is a psychological, spiritual, social, social problem happening in the mindset of black people, and it needs to be talked about, but it's not discussed uh, in America. In politics today. Well, I know that there's this victim ideology that's pumped out there by the social engineers who, 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 who've used the social engineering and the collectivism of the black community as the model for all the other communities. I mean, I see this being done across the board. America is, is dying culturally. Yeah, it is, but it isn't the victimization that's the problem. And I understand that many people use that to advance their own causes. But there is a No, but I mean a mindset of almost like people expecting they can't succeed because MSNBC told them that. Well, that's true. That, that, that is true. And, and perhaps that goes back to my initial point and premise is that you would, you would believe that you can't succeed and you would believe MSNBC and others if you are without honor and integrity. You would allow yourself to be manipulated by those uh, because you have no honor to fight back against that. So, yeah, I, I can agree that's a possibility. But the bottom line and the bottom premise here is that black people are, social, are suffering from a social disorder. And it needs to be talked about. I believe in black people. I'm black myself. And I work every day to advance the causes and to try to do something about this problem we have.
around in America. Well, I think a lot of people are missing missing uh, being honorable, and I understand it's a, it's a generalization. I Man, you've you've lived it and been through it, living in the South, and then helping folks up in New York. Uh, quantify it for people: what you've seen, what's happening, and and what's going on here. Well, let's just take for instance Chicago. For instance, you made mention a few moments ago, and I haven't checked the stats myself, but six people have been shot dead this weekend in Chicago, 17 wounded. More than a thousand people have been shot since the Trayvon Martin incident back in February of 2012. And yet there have been no marches, no protests, no national outrage over all the deaths of the people that have died in Chicago. I mean, you've had a six-month-old baby die, you have a five-year-old girl die, you've had 15-year-old boys and 16-year-old girls all shot dead. And yet there is no public outrage because as far as black people are concerned, the black life or the black death is a very cheap death and it doesn't get the national attention. Only time a black death gets attention is when it happens with a white person. Now, the reason for that is because black people themselves don't honor their own value. Uh, life is cheap if you are black on black crime. There, there is no outrage. The only time it gets some sort of lifting if it's just involved with a white person involved. Well, I've got to say this. I've got to say this because I've interviewed a lot of black socialists and liberals, and I've had them here in person, and they say, hey, there are too many black people. I hope they all get aborted. More for me, this idea of, of, of as long as the state's killing black people, uh, you know, that's cute and fun. You'll pay for more abortions. Where does that come from? Because, because that is a phenomenon I've seen. Well, I think that w what has happened over the past generation, it hasn't always been this way, but what has happened over the past generation is that black people have turned their fate, their social and moral uh, lives over to a bunch of race baiters, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton types, and then of course it's been glamorized by the gangs, the bloods and the crips and uh, the rap music, and they've lost a sense of dignity. More, more specifically, you don't have the kind of fatherly structure in the black homes anymore, the black communities. And, and blacks that do well run like black flight from the community. So we've got a major social issue that, uh, you know, nobody white or no government can cure. We have got to look to Almighty God to cure our problems. Well, stay black. there. I, I mean, undoubtedly, what you're talking about is happening everywhere, but it is worse, obviously, statistically, in the black community. I mean, it's the war on fathers. Turn on television. Every show demonizes fathers. I'm Alex Jones. We'll be back with Pastor Manning. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. All right, folks, Alex Jones here back live. Pastor James David Manning is up in Harlem and has a big church up there and really tries to help the community and uh, get people to where they're not dependent. But I got to be honest here. I'm not up in Harlem. I've been there before, visited. I, I didn't grow up in the South like Pastor Manning did. I, I'm not black, so I can't speak from all his experiences. But when I look at the social engineers and read what the globalists said they'd do 100 years ago, they use the black community as the beta test to break up the family, to kick the men out, to make the women the house boss, all that. That's the model now percolating into all communities. You turn on television, every message is the man's an idiot. Every message is the man's a moron. And then men buy into this and go along with it. I mean, I mean look at Deadline Hollywood. Official Superman sequel will feature Batman in one explosive new film where the Man of Steel and Batman join forces and adult men are all excited about that. Folks, I'm not saying you're bad if you like a Superman movie. The point is men are acting like little boys, though. They have the same excitement my 10-year-old son has. The real war is going on right now for our families, our communities. And even the tough guy men just want to strut around acting tough to other men. They don't want to actually be involved. It's a world of spectators. And then I've talked to the MTV executives off record. How they were told in the mid-90s, get rid of the rock and roll, which is destructive enough. Gangster. And they want to destroy our community. So I'm not, I'm not giving a free pass 
to the out of control problems we see in the black community. What I'm saying is, Pastor Manning, is that the beta, t there is a victimology there and that the globalist engineered so much of this, Margaret Sanger and others saying we gotta make these people dependent because black communities weren't like that 70 you know, years ago. And look at what big government's done to black people and look what it does to everybody else. This tree has got poison fruit. Pastor Manning, you've got the floor. I mean, break down what you think's happening here, but let's also get into the whole case and where you see this going and why is the media playing up black on white crime like you know, it's kind of cute to knock the head in of a cracker. Well, you're right. There is this globalist program to victimize or to use a group of people such as black people. And one may consider them easy prey. However, my experiences early on were that black men were strong men, that they were not easy prey. They were strong family men. They worked hard. They took care of their families. Uh, well, that was my dad's experience growing up in East Texas. Yeah, and my father down in, in North Carolina. Uh, what we see happening today, however, is that black men have forgotten their roots. They have forgotten where they've come from. They've forgotten the fact that they need to be providers and protectors of their families. They've forgotten that. And the reason why, Alex, they have forgotten is because it's not taught anymore. Now, you know, you may get, you know, the media or the globalists involved in the process, but I think basically we've walked away from God. That's what we've done. I agree, and, and it's so cool in the culture, period. I mean, the gangsterism is spread everywhere, not just black folks, to knock women up. Ah, ha, ha. It's, it's so cool to be lazy. It's so cool to be a thug, and, and it's not. It's, it, I mean, it, it's destructive. And, and, and it's, it is the order of the day in the black community, and the black churches are not addressing this issue. The media, on the other hand, is not addressing it either. In fact, the media is promoting it. So we've got a major psychological problem. And, and going back to whether white men are suffering the same kind of thing with the attack on white men or men in general by the media, they very well may be. But there's a stability in the white family that you don't see in the black community. And I think that we're going to have to look very carefully at uh, the fact that both generations or both races of men are being victimized or they're being attacked. But at least the white man continues to build his community, continues to take care of his family, whereas the black man does not. So the difference here is the, is the semblance of honor. When a man has integrity, no matter how much he's attacked, or no matter how much he's tempted, he continues to maintain his sense of integrity towards the vital fundamental parts of his life, such as his family, his wife, his children, and his community. Absolutely. I get tempted all the time, and, uh, I, just, well. and, and I just think about my children. Absolutely. And I also think about my ancestors. Right. I don't want to make my family a loser family. I come from a good family. Right. So we, we've got to then, even though there is an attack, there's a globalist attack, we've got to come to terms with the fact, why is it that black men so easily give in as a group, as a race? What, what, what is the root cause of that? And I have diagnosed it as without honor, and of course, beyond that, we have walked away from God. But it's honor and integrity. Okay, well, my dad growing up in East Texas said the black folks that he knew and in general went to church more, had successful businesses, and were incredibly upstanding people who were into dignity and being honorable and wouldn't put up with any type of you know uh, bad behavior. He said statistically he thought they were even more upright than white folks. So how since my dad, who's 63, and grew up in East Texas, how has it completely inverted itself? Some numbers, blacks had less illegitimacy 65 years ago than whites. Now the numbers are reversed. Alex, I've looked at this matter very carefully. As you stated, I grew up in the South. I'm now up in New York, and I'm black. Uh, the one thing I see that's most critical to the destruction of the black man has been the civil rights movement. Now, many would argue that that has been the thing that has helped black people. Alex, I can tell you from personal experience, from intellectual experience, from educational, historical experiences, the one thing that has crushed the black man has been the civil rights movement, starting with Rosa Parks and going all the way back to the time of A. Philip Randolph and the, the workers' movement on, on the trains. And when the civil rights movement reached its peak with Dr. King and this whole idea of abdicating responsibility for the home started then, as it also started with it's the hatred for the government, burn, baby, burn, black and I'm proud, all of that was the beginning of the dissolution of the honor and the structure of the black family. And Nothing more can be pointed but out. But you're not indicting, I mean, I, 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 I mean, you're not indicting, Sherman, you're not indicting the civil rights movement. Are you you're saying something bad got flipped during that process? I am indicting the civil rights movement. Yes, I am. 
Okay, so what should have been done then? Because obviously that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But 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 then once the state comes in and breaks up the family, and now the government takes away the responsibility, I can see that making people weak. That's dependency. But I mean, how specifically? I mean, what would you have done then? Well, I think that we could have found another way other than leading blacks to revolt against the government while at the same time revolting against the principles that made them strong. My pastor taught me that back in the 70s, his daughter, there was a strike by students in the New York City school system. And uh, he said he was going to make his daughter go. And he took her to school, though there was no one there, no teachers there. He made her go to school because he didn't want her to participate in the strike. What he was saying was this. Once you teach people to revolt against the authority, they won't just stop at the school system. They'll stop at every authority as well. And that's what happened in the civil rights movement. See, white people have not had a civil rights movement. White people have not had a, a white movement in America. And were they to do so, you would probably find, well, I don't know if as much as in the black community, but were there to be a white movement, uh, you would probably find there would be, a, and there has been, let me retract that, the hippie movement, the free love movement. Oh, no, I agree. No, movement. no, no, the white movements I know about are a bunch of losers who use that as the excuse to do nothing and just, I gotta be honest, the black supremacist and the white supremacist, they all act like the same, a bunch of trash. Yeah, well, they are. They, that's the exact word to describe them as well. But, but Alex, I have indicted the civil rights movement, and out of that have spawned these civil rights leaders, Jesse Jackson, now the high priest, Al Sharpton, priest number two, um, and, and, and Barack Hussein Obama being the product of all of that, which has brought us to a worse state than we were when your father raising you in East Texas saw the integrity of black men. Though their positions may have been Jim Crow at the time, they were at least integral. I tell you what, stay there. Do one more segment. I know it's Sunday night, but I want you to come back and finish up talking about solutions you've discovered and, and your perspective uh, and more. Stay with us. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. 
we can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> That's right, folks, and we are live. It is Sunday, the 21st day of July, 2013, final segment with Pastor Manning. Then in the um, final segment of the broadcast today, I'm going to get into a bunch of news, economic news, uh, cybernetic, transhumanist news. It's very, very important. That is coming up. Uh, briefly, I want to tell you about ProPure water filtration and the Pro One system. We're the largest distributor of these systems in the world because we sell them at the lowest prices at InfoWarsStore.com. And I went out years ago and did my own research on the very best gravity-fed filtration systems. ProPure is it, destroying the competition in side-by-side -side comparisons. We already have the lowest price, but we've been perpetually running a sale for 10% off. They're already lowest price with promo code WATER at InfoWars Store, one word, InfoWarsStore.com. And you also then support the broadcast while you get the lowest price and filter your water, taking uh, the water of life and one of the most important things in your body uh, and one of the most contaminated things out there uh, into your own hands. So InfoWarsStore.com. Also, the new film that I'm in and consulted on and, and distributing, it's excellent state of mind. Uh, is available on Blu-ray and DVD, now shipping. Also available on the online video bookstore. There's Patriot t-shirts, everything. PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, Memberships are there. Uh, everything at InfoWarsStore.com. Or you can also call toll-free seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Promo code WATER to get ProPure or get any of the books, videos, t-shirts, you name it. And your purchases, again, make this transmission possible. 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. Now, Pastor Manning, I had a lot of folks uh, last week, and then I was fishing down on the Gulf, uh, and uh, my, the, the, the guide that took me out said, hey, you ought to get Pastor Manning on the show. Have you heard of him? Because this guy wasn't a listener, but his brother-in-law was. And I said, yeah, I should get his take on it. And look, uh, Pastor Manning, I don't want to sit here and disagree with you, and I, want to, and I want to play a clip of Charles Barkley, who I totally agree with uh, here in a moment, and then, and then get your take on that as well. But I get you growing up before all this happened and then seeing go from 9% illegitimacy to 93% illegitimacy uh, to go from black-on-black -black crime, incredibly rare, to 94% of it. Uh, you know, 262,000 blacks have killed each other, FBI's numbers since 1976. I mean, this is genocide. And 52% of blacks being aborted before they're born, and black people, you know, the black leader's not caring. My, my issue is I've read the letters in the 20s by Margaret Sanger and the Rockefeller Foundation. People can pull these up in uh, university archives, what Missouri have them, where she said, we're going to pose as liberals, we're going to break up their families, we'll, we'll kill these weeds. So you see the byproduct and just say, hey, this has been terrible. And you're saying another way, whatever. Regardless, it's been done. And the anti-male, anti-family. Uh, uh, you know, Alex, 
to, you're right, and, and all has been done, and it's working effectively. It is genocide. Uh, it's a disaster beyond disaster, what's happening in the community. But I, I, I have, or at least would like to suggest, a remedy to that. And I think if we're talking particularly in the black community, while I recognize all of us are as Americans and respect that greatly, but when you talk about the black community, you talk about Margaret Sanger and what's happening with the abortions and the, the homicide rates, the killing rates of one another. Uh, my solution is this, Alex, is that um, black people need to come together. And I'm suggesting that we as a nation of people stop our hatred for this nation and, and God's blessings upon it. Stop our hating for the Constitution and the laws that have built this nation and made it the great nation that it is. And, and doing that, we should go to a place that's symbolic, like Gettysburg, where 600,000 people, or 60,000 people died in one day there in Gettysburg. But the Civil War produced the deaths of 600,000 Americans fighting that contest over slavery as an issue. Black people, I believe, were they to make the commitment to go there and put aside uh, their continual blaming of slavery and oppression and blaming white people for all this wrong and ills with them, and would say, we, are, we embrace America, we want to be Americans, we want to live in this nation, we want to contribute to this nation. We're no longer going to blame white people for everything that's wrong with us. We're going to put aside this talk about slavery. We want to bless America as a nation and as a people. I am convinced if they confess that and did that, you see a, a great change in race relationships in America. You see this nation come together. And I believe, Alex, that black people can contribute to this nation in ways they've never done before. Right now, we've got a lot of basketball players. You're going to hear from Charles Barkley in a few moments who's become sort of a spokesperson. But I'm convinced, Alex, beyond a shadow of a doubt, if black people would simply confess that America is a great nation, we're willing to participate, we're going to put aside all of our hatred and all of the things that have made us, divided us, and we want to participate, that black people can then begin to contribute in ways in which I'm talking about business. Well, that's exactly what Ted Nugent said on this show Wednesday, and he's been attacked in more than 20 newspapers for what he said on my show, but he said exactly that. Well, that's the truth. I mean, that's, that is the core of the problem. You asked me earlier, what would I have done when I have led the civil rights movement? Well, I can't go back there, and I really don't know what I would have done, but that has already taken place, and it has brought absolute destruction. Alex, I see the civil rights movement as destructive as Margaret Sanger and the abortion movement in America. Sure, but you've got to admire somebody like, listen, I get needless rebellion being bad but if, if the government's been taken over by foreign interest and is in rebellion against the republic i'm not in rebellion trying to stop their revolution against the republic i get called a revolutionary i'm a restorationist and i get look when people attack me and try to hold me down i work 10 times harder uh, I don't let somebody go, well, you've, you've tilted the tables against me, so I'm going to give up. I get how psychologically and spiritually how bad it is. I know the left are actually a bunch of racists trying to keep pe black people down. My point is they know what they're doing. Yeah, but the, the thing of it is, Alex, is that you're absolutely right about that. But you're right. You work twice as hard or ten times as hard to overcome that. And that's the mantra that must be picked up by a social group or a racial group such as black people. They must work not in necessarily in confrontation to try to overturn it, but they must work at the principles that are fundamental that build great communities, and that way, the same way you overcome the obstacles. I do the same thing, Alex. You know I get attacked all day long and ten times on Sunday, but I work very hard on the principles, the fundamental things. I believe that would demonstrate um, what my integrity is all about and will put all my adversaries and my enemies to shame. Black people need to do that as well. Well, I well, I'll say this. The social engineers in Divide and Conquer on CNN, MSNBC, NPR, they know full well, Pastor Manning, that when they sit there and invoke race, 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 I was watching CNN during the break in, in, in the coffee room, and they were talking about black this, black that. They want you to be about what color you are instead of about what you stand for, really the opposite of what Martin Luther King talked about, about the character of our deeds, which I fully endorse. So I get what you're saying. It all becomes about the blackness, which then the media defines, so you're becoming a slave of the social engineers. And well, I, I, yeah. I used the phrase a few moments ago, I said I'm black, because I wanted to reference, you're talking about my southern upbringing and my New York now living, but I don't call myself black, Alex. I don't call myself an African-American, and I get angry if someone refers to me as such. I'm an American. I'm an American. I don't want to be identified.
God is black. And I think we need to drop these racial... No, no, I agree. You, you don't want to be a hyphenated American like John Wayne. Talk, look, I, I'll assure you, folks, if somebody can do a job and is smart and talented, they will excel. And the media acts like that any of us can only be famous if we're a movie star or football player because the globalists don't want you competing with them in all the real things that matter, culturally getting people to be individuals and to do the right thing and to stand up. Pastor Manning, in closing, uh, where do you think this whole Trayvon Martin thing is going? I think Obama has used it as a distraction from his terrible record. Well, I, I, Obama's statement, I would have had hope that perhaps that Sabrina Fulton could have put an end to this last week after the verdict was rendered. It was a just verdict. It was a verdict based on the information. It was a verdict based on the morals and the character of both of the men. Trayvon Martin was a young thug that had been kicked out of Miami High School, pot smoking, fighting everywhere, kicked out of his own mother's home because she could no longer contend with him, sent it to his father there in Sanford. That's the Hold on, we can't cut this off. Hold on. Um, finish your, your, your statement on Trayvon. I agree with Jimmy Carter. I mean, they can't get uh, Zimmerman on premeditated murder, so he had to go. I mean, it's like O.J. can't totally prove it, must acquit, and 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 they knew that. I want to get your take on this and then finish up on Trayvon Martin with Pastor Manning. They knew when they went for that he would get off, so they wanted this as a diversion. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Atla.org is the church site and also news site that Pastor Manning runs. And he's very eloquent in a lot of subjects, supports the Second Amendment, resists the globalist. He's been visited by the CIA, FBI, you name it, for simply speaking out against it. He's defended myself when I'm on Piers Morgan and places. And, I mean, we know the fruits of what's been done has been a disaster. And the establishment's answer is more of the same, more of what they've done. Uh, we're going to just get a, a few comments from him and then, and then go to some other news I haven't covered yet. But first off, I've been mentioning it. Here's what uh, Charles Barkley, the famous basketball player, uh, had to say. And it's similar to what Jimmy Carter uh, had to say. Anybody who actually followed the trial knows they were trying to frame Zimmerman. I mean, even if he was guilty, uh, which I don't think the evidence points towards, you got to let somebody go if they're trying to frame him. Let's go ahead and go to this clip. There are very few people who have a pure heart when it comes to race. Uh, racism is wrong in any shape, form. There are a lot of black people, people who are racist, too. I think sometimes when people talk about race, they act like only white people are racist. There are a lot of black people who are racist. And I don't like when it gets out there in the media, because I don't think the media has clean hands. I think you're right. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm yeah, glad you made that yeah, point. Yeah, I don't think the media has clean hands. Yeah. And like I said, I feel sorry that young kid got killed. Absolutely. But judging by the evidence, I don't think that guy should have went to jail for the rest of his life. But something happened bad that night, obviously. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's go back to Pastor Man. Look, look, I, I mean, I, when I was a teenager, I wasn't a thug or a hood, but I got in fights and stuff and, you know, stole beer out of golf carts on the golf course where I grew up. We, we all did it, you know, grabbed some beer. Uh, I don't even know if he did that, but burglary tools, a photo of a gun on his phone, that got suppressed. The witnesses all saying he climbed on top of Zimmerman. Uh, the NBC editing the tape that we covered last year, it's finally getting attention because of the lawsuit. Uh, to, to, to try to invoke race. Pastor Manning, wasn't this really about diverting off of all the other big issues? The Justice Department sent people down there to get the protesting going. I mean, isn't this about race politics? I mean, what do you think, shifting gears, why do you think the Justice Department was so involved in this? And what do you have to say about Trayvon Martin's family now? And I feel sorry for their son being dead, but I mean, my goodness, out leading demonstrations and, and talk of, pro, uh, of boycotting Florida as if Florida did something? I mean, this is crazy. Well, as far as the Justice Department is concerned, a diversion from what's going on in our government, one of the things that I would refer to would be your information of what's presently happening. I mean, we still got the Benghazi event. We, we don't know really what's happening in Syria with al-Qaeda being the primary forces against the government over in Syria uh, and how the Obama administration is handling this, what's happening with Edward Snowden and what's going on with all of that. All of those things have been wiped off of the front page completely and how the Obama, the Obama administration is now able to operate in the dark while this Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman trial is going forward and everybody's paying attention to that. I really don't know exactly how effective it is, but I can tell you just from my own personal observation, it's very effective. But the matter of, of uh, Trayvon Martin's family, 
I prayed that Sabrina Fulton would go ahead and put an end to this, stop Al Sharpton, tell him to sit down, stop Eric Holder, stop the NAACP, stop all these race baiters, stop CNN, stop MSNBC from profiteering from this matter. Listen, I'm the last person to judge someone about character as a youth. I messed up royally, Alex. I did. And every day I ask God to forgive me. And it's not a day that goes by that I don't think about the things that I did when I was a youth. But having said that, with a clean heart now, a retentive heart, listen, Trayvon Martin was a thug, and that's just all there is to it. They need to give George Zimmerman back his life. The man was innocent. He was a neighborhood watch person. We don't really have any evidence that he actually followed Trayvon Martin. Well, there's a lot of calls to kill him. What's going to happen if Zimmerman ends up getting killed? Well, it's highly possible, and if he does, that blood will be laid at the hands of CNN, Anderson Cooper, and, and Sabrina Fulton, Al Sharpton, and all that crowd. And I will raise my voice to high heavens. If a man, if that man, if a hair on George Zimmerman's hair, head is touched, I will raise my voice, and they will not be able to shut me up in this nation. Well, I think if Zimmerman was anything, as he was a busybody, and maybe a good busybody, he did stuff like file complaints on cops for racial profiling of black people. He, well, I mean, I mean, the truth is, he's not the guy they said he was. They just manufactured who he was to get us all fighting with each other. Well, why can't he have his life back? Why can't he have his life? His family doesn't have their life anymore. His father, Robert Zimmerman, and Gladys Zimmerman. I mean, the, 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 the court has spoken. The evidence, anybody that followed the trial realizes that it was indeed self-defense. Give the man his life back and go to Chicago and investigate all the deaths that are happening in Chicago right now while you and I are speaking. See if we can put a stop to the suffering of the people in sure. Chicago rather than continue. Sure, you're talking about real numbers versus emotion, and, and, and that's the propaganda we've got to deal with. I look forward to having you back on soon. Atla.org, Pastor Manning, uh, thank you for spending Sunday with us. Thank you, Alex, for having me. All right, there goes Pastor Manning. And again, I'm going to be back tomorrow. I've still got some news I'm going to cover. 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon Eastern. Uh, station listings and free audio, uh, podcast, iPhone apps, Droid apps, all free. Infowars.com and the listen page or Infowars.com forward slash show or PrisonPlanet.com. And uh, the nightly news, of course, PrisonPlanet.tv, 7 o'clock weeknights. Uh, let me shift gears out of this. I mean, I've had to cover it just to show the diversions and the distractions that are going on. And I like to bring Pastor Manning on because he brings in a different perspective. Uh, but, but let's shift gears to this article right here separately, okay? This is out of the London Independent. It was also on CNN. Inside Google HQ, what does the future hold for the company whose visionary plans include implanting a chip in our brains? The Googleplex, everything basically run by Google. Well, Google is DARPA, NSA, NQTEL, CIA. Look it up. Just gave you all the terms. Okay, I mean, we were the first a decade ago to have CIA operatives on. One guy got death threats. Mr. St I mean, just all sorts of stuff when they came on. We broke this. Now it's mainstream news. And I remember reading a declassified 2001 from 1977 Pentagon plan that they actually reclassified. That rarely happens. It was already out there. Uh, where in 77, DARPA said the ultimate goal is that we will all live in uh, water tanks and our own heat will power the computers and we will all have brain chips first before we're putting the hive mind tanks. In my book that's on prisonplanet.tv, it's now out of print, The Sent to Tyranny actually shows that plan. By the way, you probably heard of that. It's called the Matrix. <laughs> Drones run by computers that are autonomous, Skynet. Oh, that's a movie. Those are movies imitating life, not not life imitating art. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. I'm not the one saying all this, folks. This is CNN, London Independent. Their plan is to put a chip in your brain. You won't be able to... The, uh, the, the military's already been getting chips. That's classified, but special forces have been getting them for 20 years. Uh, let's continue here. Uh, here's an article from 2008. Professor calls for Google-type brain chip implants. That's from Infowars.com. And Infowars.net in 2008. Just want to show you we were already on top of this. Here's another one. Side to successfully implant chip that controls the brain. Again, all sounds good on the surface, but the globalists run this system. Here's another one. NPR, high-end stores use facial recognition tools to spot VIPs. License plate readers, face scanners. They've been up for at least 15 years, folks, all over the country. Okay? 
and, and, and now folks are trying to subpoena this for court to prove they're innocent. Oh, no, no, no. They want to pick and choose what crime to go after because the globalists run the government. You understand that, folks? It's a technocracy. Now, let's show some police state news. Here's the Wall Street Journal saying the, the police have turned into military and military fights enemies. And that's why the police more and more are treating us like enemies. And all over the country, two new articles just the last few days, they arrest people that refuse to let cops in randomly without warrants into houses. Look at this article. Off-duty Tucson cop accused is the headline. No, there's clear video. And he's been fired walking in with his buddy wearing nothing but a bulletproof vest, aiming guns at the clerk just to laugh and have fun. A couple of wannabe Rambo nutcases. That's the kind of guys they want to hire now. Uh, this is the type of stuff that's being pushed uh, and the type of things that are being engaged in. Here's another one. Police arrest woman after request to see warrant. They just randomly came to her house in Lubbock. Boom. Came in and arrested her and took her to jail for asking for a warrant. Florida nurse terrorized by U.S. Marshals in warrantless raid. Wasn't even the right apartment complex or house. So what? Boom. Came in. Everything else, uh, that's uh, in the papers there in Florida. Let me see who covered that first. I have a link to it here. Let me just give you the source uh, on that. Infowars.com did a story. I read this article uh, this uh, weekend, but there's a link there in the story of the local newspaper if you want to go find that. Uh, so there you go. This is the, oh, U.S. military drone surveillance is expanding to hotspots beyond declared combat zones, including America, national security. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. This is designed and aimed at us. We have due process and a Bill of Rights and Constitution for a reason. Because every time you get rid of checks and balances, corrupt elements take over and run wild. And when corruption gets into government, it is the almighty danger. Government is the number one cause of death in worldwide history. Non-natural death. 262 million killed in the last 100 years by government called democide. Infowars.com. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.